The Titanfall 2 Platinum Trophy has 51 trophies and is a difficulty of 6 out of 10 with only one playthrough and 17 hours to completion. Finally, I can relax and do a Platinum Trophy that doesn't take years off my life and make me want to jump off a building. Oh my god! Alright, so it's still a little hard. Oh, okay, good to know. Titanfall 2 is one of my most favorite games of all time and the fact that they don't have a third one coming makes me very sad. Almost as much as your dad's pullout game. I started the Platinum Journey with 15 trophies already unlocked since I've played the game before a long time ago, seeing as it's such a classic game. The main objective of this Platinum Trophy is directed around the campaign, much like Biden's main objective is to f*** America as much as he can during his campaign. Anyways, we have to beat the game on Master, which can most closely be related to realism difficulty on Call of Duty games, meaning it's very hard, just like my penis. Whoa, whoa. The first mission has a tutorial and we go into a VR simulation much like we are all in right now. You just don't know about it. The gauntlet, which is a simulation where you have to kill a bunch of enemies within a certain amount of time and get a high time to get a trophy. In fact, you have to get a top three time. And as you can see, my skills right now are Yikes. absolutely horrendous. I swear to God, I have never felt so embarrassed than I did right now when I first tried the gauntlet. You're supposed to get an under 33 second time, and as you can see, I wasn't even close. I did stay here, however, and try it over and over again to see how good I could get. Definitely not because the game was still installing with my dog's internet that runs as good as a crippled man. We leave the gauntlet, and they actually suggested I go on master difficulty, which is shocking because if they watched what just happened in there, they would have definitely thought differently. The first mission, we crash land on a planet, and I emerged from my escape pod ready to go which is very different from when I was born. The first two years of my life, I couldn't even speak. I can't believe this story you're telling me. But the second I left that escape pod, I rushed forward, forced Canal, and really just gave it to the robots like I gave it to your mom yesterday. Surprisingly, the master difficulty didn't really kick in here, probably because it's the first real part of the game, but I got through the first enemies and was jumped by a huge, tall, dark, handsome man who kicked my ass and then my homie who was just trying to save me. He got gangbanged like that one girl with all the big black dudes. And no, not your sister. We wake up again just to see a uh -oh. bunch of animals about to eat us out. What? And our robot friend kills them mindlessly whilst he is also dying. The pilot inside realizes he's about to go to the other side and see Queen Elizabeth. So he gives us full rights to use his robot however we want. What do you mean by that? Anyways, we need to find him some new batteries since he is out of power like usual. I guess Elon didn't think about how inconvenient charging those things are. We grab both batteries and I only died a few times. Okay, like, that's, that's not even that bad, right? Any After fully charging our boy BT up, who, by the way, is an absolute dog, and probably my favorite side character or companion in any game I've ever played. We get fully charged up and then do some target practice on the local fauna and soldiers who somehow ended up on top of this place. Then a big black man comes down from the heavens much like Jesus did 2000 years ago. And in the same succession, we kill them to keep up with historical accuracy. We head to the next mission in order to assist our fellow brothers who somehow survived the devastating war we just escaped. We fight a ton of titans and honestly, I didn't die very much here, which is shocking since I suck at video games. I think the whole master difficulty part really just kicks in when you're not with your titan and are in the wide open, just like your girl's legs always are. We go into the sewers and have to turn on the power like it's COD zombies all over again. And just like zombies, I died over and over since I'm as efficient at living as the dog is at being a cat. What did he say? But I finally get to the power and slap it on in quick fashion. We are still separated from BT, however, which is not ideal seeing as Master Difficulty loves it when this happens. You can already guess what's about to happen, but I slowly descend into madness as I watch myself get ridiculed by a bunch of AI who were made in 2016. Eventually, we regroup with a bunch of survivors who are just hanging around a literal horror movie set, and then we get jumped and die together. Also, this grenade launcher is a total scam, and I would not recommend anybody use it seeing as you could probably piss on the robots and have it do more lasting damage. For whatever reason, this room right here actually tortured me more than the orphanage did. I just kept on dying over and over and eventually gave up fighting and just ran past the enemies, which funnily enough actually works most of the time in this game, especially on the easier difficulties. You literally just don't have to fight anyone. It's amazing. We reached the final room before we can regroup with BT and it's honestly just a giant zombies ripoff. Like if the enemies had more acne and f***ed up bodies, I could have sworn we were in BO3 right now, which I am going to do some by the way since you guys keep asking and you guys got the cold war video to 10,000 likes. Lord have mercy 
on my soul. After years of being harassed by exploding heat seeking ticks and bombs feeling like we in the Middle East, BT finally helps us and moves that rusty out ball sack of his. I even entered him like usual. We do it so much actually the hole just became bigger permanently. Uh. After having sexy time with BT, we walk two steps over and find out Kane has been watching us the whole time. Low key, I'm super embarrassed, but his hairline is even worse that everything turns out to be just fine. We even killed the poor guy because of it. Almost like a modern day Hitler just taking out bad hairlines to even out the gene pool. Kane still had his radio on and we yoinked it from him so now we can hear all the things his friends say and they talk about him more than you think. I kind of feel bad for the man, but he's definitely not in a good place now. Shortly after, I got a trophy for collecting pilot helmets, which I have been doing whilst getting my butthole spread apart in this game. Just like Kane, we are still in the enemy base, so we try to escape and BT suggests we use this elevator button. But instead, it just grabs him and yet again, I am left with my cock in hand, balls bluer than a smurf, and with nobody to talk to. And that basically sums up my social life. Me and BT are split up once more and I have to navigate a house building facility, which seems really weird. But if this is how Home Depot does it, then I can't complain because it's kind of cool. The only thing that really ruined my time here is the fact that every four seconds, I was dying. And I couldn't really do anything about it because the enemies were just everywhere. Like you'd think in a facility where nearly everything is automated, we wouldn't need so many troops on site. But what do I know about evil air planning? Mine is still under construction. I just need a few more videos to get recommended first. If you're wondering why they are building houses, it's actually for training simulations and we get thrown into one by Ash the robot baddie who we will fight later on. But first, surviving this was insane. I actually rage quit the game and just sat in my room thinking about my life for about an hour before returning to suffer through this section. I think the enemies right here might have some of the best aim I have ever seen in a video game. I would be across the entire room barely peeking my fat ass face out and just get domed in the head like Abraham Lincoln did. After an hour of agony, I finally did it and was extremely pleased with my efforts. Remember that girl Ash I was talking about? Yeah. Here is her boss fight. Literally right after we just suffered, we get to suffer again. The only hard part about this fight for me was the fact that I just suck at fighting her titan type. I'm pretty sure it's the ronin titan and it's just so annoying with that gay ass sword. And it pisses me off way more when I die to it because they don't have a lot of health, but half the time they're there they just block and then melee you one time and you die. Which I did die. But then I killed her stinky ass and we get to hear as she burns to death in the robot. God, this is such a masterclass of a video game. We've almost reached the point of the campaign where I haven't played. And on this mission, we get our first trophy of the new day. Yes, I know, it's probably halfway through the video already, but that's just how it is, okay? I'm sorry. For the inconvenience of me not keeping up! Anyways, on this mission, we do a lot of cool time traveling things where we can just swap between the past and present, and we even do parkour and sh while doing that. This mission is definitely up there with my top five favorite moments in single player games that I have played so far in my life. It's just so cool and original, whereas in most COD campaigns, we do the same mission but with different scenery every year. I got another pilot trophy helmet. Oh my god. <laughs> what? And finally, we are into the campaign enough that we will get trophies for beating the story's missions. We see an object off in the distance, and time just completely stops, and I feel like I'm in that one X-Men movie with Quicksilver, which that honestly has got to be such a cool superpower. Like, you can just do anything at any time, it's awesome. I decide to shoot this poor guy, however, so when he wakes up, he won't wake up. We run into the light like any good soldier would and get a trophy for dying inside. The next mission requires us to power up a beacon so we can do something. I honestly don't know what it is, but this game looks super cool and is fun, so I can't complain. We have to chase down a nuclear reactor gun, or something relating to that, which is buried deep within this enemy base and past a multitude of enemies. I finally reach it and shoot the poor robot carrying it. which honestly made me feel bad because he didn't deserve such treatment. Nonetheless, we got the radioactive gun we were after and get to do some cool puzzles with it. This gun is actually a lot of fun and you can do a lot of cool things with it. I can't even imagine how much it could vibrate something. Once we power up the facility, we get another trophy for our unpaid labor and head over to the big boy place to fix it since it's all broken anyway. Even with all the high tech that we have, the only solution BT can find is to throw my ass with his manpower and I pissed my pants midair. This place is full of enemies and I'm not gonna lie, I did die a lot here. I know it's a shocker to you all, but I'm pretty sure it would have helped if I activated some slaves to assist me. They even support doing it by giving me a trophy. We finally reached a device on the giant antenna thing. Just ignore the fact that I got lost and couldn't figure out how to operate it, even though there's just a door wide open for me. I definitely didn't have to look it up, I don't know what you're talking about. I got a trophy for getting to the device, and I'm so worried as to where he put that giant thing. After activating the new device and getting the beacon working again, me and BT get jumped by another boss fight, and this dude's missile barrage will probably go down as my second reason out of 13. Firstly being the fact that you haven't liked and subscribed yet. After dying a few times I find out that being a 
pussy and hiding from him is the best way to beat him. So I did just that and got away with a victory and a trophy. I love how they give us a live feed of them moments before their death. It really makes me feel like I'm a part of the war crimes. Now that we have the beacon up and running, we can regroup with all our mates and we even have a little friendship moment where BT insists I stay with him as his pilot. Even though I quite literally just jumped the entire work ladder and probably pissed off lots of other real pilots. This choice wasn't a good one though because as we are fighting in an all out war, Lots of Titans, which would be a dope-ass movie. Uh, Universal, please take notes and get Christopher Nolan to direct it. Yeah, so I died a lot on this mission. Mostly because I struggled to take four guys at once. They always make it look so much easier. Eventually, we reach the airfield and watch as the enemy takes away the alien-looking creation, which I assume is very powerful, but I forgot what it does, to be honest. They get away, which isn't a big surprise since I f***ing died. But I shoot at their ships as they fly away, so it looks like I care. For some odd reason, we couldn't reach the ship fast enough to stop them from taking off, but we can, however, fly our ship up to them hours later and have enough time to jump onto it and try to hijack it. I love this game to death, but sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Then again, we are piloting robots, so nothing is realistic anyway. This mission is mostly just an annoyance, but there is a cool boss fight on top of the big ship with Viper, and this boy was actually difficult to kill, and I'm pretty sure the trophy guide even says he is the hardest in the game. I actually didn't think it was too hard. Granted, I did die a few times, but that was just because I couldn't figure out how to avoid his attacks in between his ultimate ones. Anyways, we kill him, or so we thought we did because the guy comes back a minute later to finish what he started and BT knocks open his cockpit and I annihilated his white monkey red butt ass. Me and BT vent like it's among us and find the thing we are after. He, for whatever reason, can't reach it so he throws me in there to be more inclusive to the whole group. And then everything goes to sh**. We really get to see how much BT cares for us though because he sacrifices everything to save us. And he even ends up stringed up like a puppet and is forced to give up the power thingy to save our life from this Australian man who puts a gun in our throat. Like I'm fine with things in my throat, but only as long as my life's not threatened, you know? We take BT's eye head thing and it somehow has a gun and a knife in it for us. It even gives us aimbot, which makes this mission so easy and I really wish we could have just done this at the start. After hacking our way through enemies, we regroup with BT and head out to finish what we started. Funnily enough, there's a trophy in this game for using the aimbot guns, and it's even called aimbot. I always love it when developers make funny trophies. It really shows they care enough about making billions of dollars to try a little. There's a big boy boss fight, but using the aimbot gun, it's actually so easy, I can't even be bothered to make a joke about how easy it is. Just like your girl. We get a trophy for the confirmed kill, and as we are trying to shut down the machine once more, the final boss shows up, the Australian man himself, who has only climbed that high up the work ladder because of his cool accent. He actually ends up just leaving us though, and we don't even fight him. I think we also get a teaser for Apex Legends, I think, or maybe it's just a coincidence. BT sacrifices himself in one of the most popular and emotional moments of the game, and throws us away as he dies for good. This moment was actually amazing and is one of the reasons why I will always have high regards to this game. After doing some anti-gravity parkour, we finally see a real woman and get trophies for the completion of a truly amazing game that I hold dear to my heart. I actually missed a lot of trophies, so I went back and did some objectives that I simply didn't do. And I even missed an entire Titan loadout, so I had to replay the whole campaign from mission five to eight, which didn't even really annoy me that much, mostly because I loved this game and playing it on easy was so goddamn easy you can just run by everyone and reach your objective. After going back and doing all the little things I missed, which mostly just consisted of Titan kills and using every one since I mainly just used the first one the whole time, I had to go back to do the gauntlet and try to get this f***ing time to below 34 and get top 3, which would prove to be a pain in my ass like I knew from the very start. Now I tried this for hours and hours. I even watched like 3 different videos on strategies and how to do it. And even knowing exactly what to do, it's still not easy because you have to master grenade throws, where to jump, and when. And I just couldn't do it. So I gave up for the night and grabbed the last pilot helmet on my way out giving me a trophy and I went to bed. The next morning I woke up at a ripe 8 a.m. and hopped right back on the game finishing up some trophies I missed including a little multiplayer one and killing an uh, animal in its cage just like PETA probably does. And then it was time to head back to the gauntlet for some more pain and I finally did it after an hour of trying to which isn't horrible but still was a lot of agony and I'm almost positive I tied the time to beat so I didn't even beat it, but god damn it, they gave me the trophy anyway, and I'm not complaining. I had one trophy left, which was to win a multiplayer match, and since this game is dead as f and the lobbies are usually empty, especially early in the morning, I went to a private match to see if it would work, and it did, which was actually hilarious, and I got awarded the platinum for doing so. That was the Titanfall 2 Platinum Experience. <laughs>